I'm, uh, I'm David, and um, today I'm going to talk about memes. Uh, if you already know what that has to do with JavaScript, then you should probably spend less time on Reddit. Um, <laughs> but what I mean by memes um, is actually in like the selfish gene theory type way, which is like an idea, behavior, or style that spreads from person to person. So like in JavaScript, um, there's like a lot of like weird syntax where like someone can create a cool syntax and then that spreads and transfers through people. And I'm going to talk about uh, like how that works. So there's this like law in most memes um, called Goodwin's Law, which is that as an online discussion grows longer, the probability of a comparison with Nazis or Hitler always approaches one. Um, and like they've tested this out, and like no matter what, like how long your conversation gets, like inappropriate subjects always come up, um, and like really really controversial topics. And like I've noticed this thing called JavaScript's law which is like on a GitHub issue, a topic about like syntax always comes up. You know, like a really legitimate issue discussion turns into like, oh, like there's no semicolons. Then like, you know, 300 comments later about like, oh, semicolons or like you use this weird syntax. Um, and I think it's created this culture which is actually like kind of nice where like the way things look matters. Uh, in a lot of other languages like Go or Java, there's like a set way of doing things. But in JavaScript, we have this like kind of cool culture which is like, oh, let's try to make things look good. Let's try to make things readable. Let's try to make things make sense. Um, and the reason we can do that is because like there's just a lot of weird shit in JavaScript, right? There's like a lot of like, oh yeah, no true equals true. No, it doesn't. Sometimes it does. Um, there's no notion of like true. It's like truthy or false is falsy. And because you have like these weird things going on, or like function names can be like any Unicode. Um, like, because you can do this, you can make really, really cool looking things. But, like, I remember the first time I saw this, like, I don't think I'm the only one with this reaction, but I was like, what is this? Like, <laughs> like this is not a language. Like, this is, there's all this weird stuff going on. Um, and that, that like, ghetto-ness is actually what, like, allows us to create really cool JavaScript libraries. Um, there's this, like, thing that programmers just love to like game systems and exploit systems and take really weird things and turn them into cool things. And this is like especially true uh, for JavaScript developers. And you know, like we don't really have integers in JavaScript, nothing's really true. We have like this whole different inheritance model. Like the whole thing's weird, but like that's what actually drives the cool stuff. Um, the best example of this is jQuery. Right, like everyone loves the whole chaining thing and not worrying about IE, and like jQuery does not look like JavaScript. It doesn't look like any language, right? Like there's no dollar sign doesn't mean selection in like any language ever. But we just like made it up, and it's like pretty. And because uh, dollar sign can be the name of a function in JavaScript, and because you can return this and like chain things, and there's just like this weird mo object model, um, you know, jQuery could create this like beautiful thing that elegantly solved the solution. And like if you look at their Google Trends score, like it just had this massive explosion. And now that there's like this community around open source and there's like, you know, conferences and things like this, like these syntaxes blow up. Um, and I think the primary driver of that is actually not like um, utilitarianism. It's not that it's like the best solution. It's really just all about style. It's really because like you can do a lot of these things in the browser. Um, so long as you don't need to support like really old versions of IE. Uh, and so like most of these things that we do in jQuery all the time, like we don't really need jQuery for. There's like a whole movement like do I really need jQuery? Um, but like people just want jQuery. Like they'll make up that they have to support IE 5.5 because like it looks cool. Um, and like I think that's actually like a good thing. Um, although if you dropped IE support, you'd definitely be winning because like that would like solve a huge, huge problem. Um, and this is like, especially with jQuery, turned to the point where, you know, 90% of JavaScript developers like think jQuery just like is JavaScript. Um, so like you go to every Stack Overflow answer and it's like, how do I do this in JavaScript? And then someone responds like with jQuery, just like assuming that's a dependency for like every application in JavaScript. And like maybe it was a couple years ago, but like it's not really anymore. Um, and like, I think that's actually great, right? That somebody was able to create a syntax and like saw a problem in the language 
and as like an application developer, not as a person defining the language, was able to create something that was like this ubiquitous and this large. And it's not the only example of that. So JavaScript, for example, doesn't have like a contains method. It doesn't have like, oh, is this element inside this array? Um, we might get that in ES6. Um, so most people do this like really ugly thing, which is like index of does not equal negative one. Um, and this is like the most common answer on Stack Overflow. This is like in most libraries. Um, but it doesn't really like use the, the ghetto-ness of JavaScript to make it really like an elegant solution. Um, so like one of the ghetto things is this bitwise not operator, this tilde. And uh, because there's like no integers that are like different bits, all numbers are 16 bits. Um, the not operator turns zeros to ones. So the only thing that's really important about that is like negative one is the only number that becomes zero. So you can take that example before where you had like did not equal negative one and you get this thing. And it's like, well, well that, like, that's pretty cool. And like no one really uses the tilde anyway. So we can just act like the tilde is the like does not equal negative one character. Um, and the first time I saw this was actually in Bootstrap. So I asked Jacob, I was like, where did you get that? And he was like, oh, well, I used to hang out in the MooTools IRC room, and there were like these OGs who would just drop knowledge on me and be like, oh yeah, tilde, bitwise not, 16 bits. And like, Jacob's not your like, you know, computer science professor who like knows these things. He's just like, this is a dope looking syntax. Like, I'm gonna keep on using this. And like, so now it's in like Bootstrap and Express and Socket.io, and it looks cool. Um, so I saw this and like my mind was just like blown because I was like, hey, um, anybody can create a syntax. And like that syntax then when other people think it's cool is like going to spread pretty organically. And then like in JavaScript, we just get to make up our own language. It's not like everywhere else where like there's, you know, like there is a spec and like people are defining it, but like it's so ghetto that like we can just make stuff up. Um, and that's like a really crazy power. So. Another example of this is uh, what, I, what I like to call like the wheel. So like if x, like do y. Um, well, it turns out, you know, logical operators, since, you know, there's no compilation process, uh, you know, one side of it could be invalid as long as like the code never gets run. So with the and, it's like y will not be evaluated if x is false. With the or operator, um, y is only evaluated if x is false. Um, so like, if you're a hipster, like, you can do the, like, instead of if x name equals x, else, you know, name equals some default, you can just do name equals x or name. And this is, like, now a really common thing. For the and operator, you can do, like, a safeguard, basically. So if y is a function on x and you don't want to get caught in that, like, tried to call function on undefined, um, you can just do, like, x and uh, x dot y. And so I was like, where does this come from? Um, so it turns out that um, minifiers have like done this for a long time because you save characters. And so when the Twitter platform team was writing their like little widget and their little button, they were like just playing around with like how short they could make things and like turning all the conditions into these. And then uh, Dustin Diaz, who was like on the platform team at the time, wrote a bunch of libraries that use this. Jacob used this in uh, Bootstrap. Um, and so then like you know all the hipsters were like, oh well this is this is cool, so we'll keep on doing it. Um, all the people who like won't use a JavaScript library that's like older than six months. Um, another example of this, uh, which is like a little bit older, is for like a long time there's been a concatenation function built into JavaScript, but it's like painfully slow. Uh, and so every, like no one used it, um, and it was just like kind of didn't really make a lot of sense. So everyone used like the plus, which is like a little bit faster. Um, but the thing that I've always wondered is like the plus doesn't really make a lot of sense. And like it's not in every language, but like you know, I used to tutor people in uh, computer science like when I went to NYU and like everyone when like you're teaching them string concatenation is like why the plus? That doesn't make any sense. And I was like, oh, you're adding two strings together. Like no, 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 like plus is for math. This has like nothing to do with that. It logically doesn't make any sense. So I just told them like some academic just like didn't know. So he's like, oh, plus. And like that's probably true um, because like the fast optimal solution uh, for a long time, it's like since change, was actually to do like a join uh, on an array of strings and then um, you would get like a really like pretty, you could you know, order your HTML with like really pretty white space. 
Uh, this actually is like still used in like the Express uh, generator. I think actually in 4.0 they got rid of it, but like the Express generator for generating uh, templates and stuff. Um, and I think it's pretty like this actually makes way more sense to students when you like tell them to people who are like new to programming because they're like, oh, that logically makes sense. You like join stuff. Um, and this is like a syntax that was like totally made up, and it was actually ended up being like more performant. So you may be wondering, like, oh my God, who cares? Like tildes, whatever. Um, and I think for me, the really important thing uh, is like what the future of like this language looks like. So I think there are a lot of because GitHub is like a relatively recent thing and its growth is really recent. People who got to GitHub really, really early, their projects kind of like were the ones that were on top. And there seems to be this like group of people who like all the JavaScript underlings like glorify and like know their names and follow them on Twitter and like if they create a new library it like comes out. And I think if we just only listen to like what they're doing and you know we just learn how to use CoffeeScript and Backbone and we don't actually try to create anything ourselves, we'll just be like on this trajectory that'll just not end well for us. Um, and I don't think that's like really what anyone wants. Um, there's this great quote I like which is that JavaScript's too important to be left to the experts. Uh, and really I think it's important to just like build your own tools and try to understand the language and not let people who like define the actual language spec uh, dictate what libraries look like and what syntax looks like, especially when it comes to ES6. The academics generally have a like, you know, arrogant kind of view of like everyone else. It's like a college dropout. I like saw that when I talked to computer science professors, they were like, no, 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 you have to do it this way. Um, and I think the beauty of JavaScript in this ghettoness is that we can totally bypass that. Uh, so my takeaway from this talk is that you should just make more memes with JavaScript. You should just try to do things differently, even if it's a task you already know how to do, or if you see syntax like doesn't make sense, just make up a new one and try to like really understand the language and all those like hacky parts rather than trying to use libraries that just abstract all that away and mindlessly follow. Thanks.